Hello, and welcome to Video Tarot Live Stream hosted by Encore Entrepreneurs Toby Yunus and Shelly Carney. We inspire excitement for small set photography tools, techniques, methods and workflow while answering all your questions about digital photography, cameras, lenses, studio lighting, and sets. Join us every Thursday at 1 p.m. Mountain Time so we can share our knowledge and experience to provide actionable tips to improve your digital photography skills. You do the intro, yeah. Okay. Hello and welcome to Video Tarot Live. I'm Shelly Carney. And I'm Toby Eunice. Thanks for joining us today. So uh, today we're going to be talking about um, some equipment that I recommend, and I do it based on the fact that uh, I belong to uh, several groups uh, on Facebook. Uh, two Let me of the just groups. ask, did you start the Amazon Live? Do I have to? I do I have to do something? tried to, but it said... Somebody was already doing it, so I didn't know what was going on. Oh, now it's not. No, it is. <laughs> it is. It's not, is it? So it says, it, it says it's already being done. So I just wanted to. It, I, I touched the button on the Amazon Live uh, app, and it, and it says we're live, but it doesn't show an image. So I don't know. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's what it's supposed to do. Okay, you've taken right. care of it. And, but you can control the Amazon Live uh, thing below the... No, because you started it, so you have to control it. Ugh. Yeah, that's what happens. I told you not to touch things. <laughs> and, and I just had it, I had the app open on my iPad. Mm. So I'm going to have to do that on here, right? Okay, well, that's good. I think I can handle this. Okay. I can handle, I can multitask. Sure. You can teach an old dog new tricks. That's right. Woof. Woof. Not, not as old as me, but. <laughs> okay. Uh, so let me get back to you of what we were talking about now that we're back on Amazon. Yeah. I just got the message we're on. So uh, we, uh, I, I mentioned that I belong to a couple of groups. I, I belong to a number of groups on Facebook, but two of the groups that I belong to are associated with the replica surfaces product that you'll hear me talk about a lot. And uh, one of them is their VIP membership, and another is a group that uh, that is for the people that have bought their courses, right? They used to have it on, um, what, what's that other product called? It starts with a D. D, 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 D. 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 Discord. Discord. And they moved it over to Facebook. Uh, but what happens in both those groups is people will ask questions related to photography, not, not only related to the use of replica, replica surfaces, uh, but to the use of photography. And this week, there were a couple of questions that I wanted to pull up and uh, answer those questions, not necessarily that uh, they're, they're watching this program, because we do, in addition to streaming to Amazon Live, we're streaming to YouTube, Facebook, and uh, Twitter. So they might see it on there. And I mentioned that we do have a show. So uh, the first thing I wanted to do was talk to you about some products and tools and techniques um, that, that actually have consequences in real life. These are real life questions uh, that are coming up. But let me go first to the pictures. Shelly, would you share our screen? Oh, first to the we'll pictures. Play. Yeah, let's do pictures. Oh, okay. So this is the photo, and I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't make a video this week, and um, I, I hope that's okay, but we're going to be able to talk about it. So Shelly and I shot a number of photos. Shelly's been doing the styling on all our photos recently, and they look so much better. Uh, she did the styling on this one for St. Patrick's Day, and this is one of the photos that we shot for St. Patrick's Day, and... Um, I thought we've been using the replica surfaces, not only the surfaces, and that those surfaces that you see there, the wall is what is called lush view, and the floor is called um, butcher's block. And so when you're doing this kind of kitchen style uh, still life, uh, they work really great for it. So we're, we're doing some other things with it as well. This is the setup, and we're going to talk a little bit about the lighting. Rather than talking about cameras and tripods, we're going to talk about the lighting. and Shelly had a good idea while we were standing there, and with one of our other shots, she said, take a shot with your iPhone so you can make a comparison. So that's one of the things that we're going to do today. So we're going to be talking about lighting, uh, especially today, right, and answer those questions. Now, one of the things that I want to point out is that 
you can see right here and right here, the lighting for this photo is the same as the lighting, I should say the lighting setup for this photo. So this is one, I'll call this the high key photo. That's the lighting for it, right? The Godox, uh, the Godox uh, 60 by 90 softbox and the Godox uh, MS300 flash, as well as the Selen's reflectors that you see over here, okay? And then this is a, a same setup at the same time that's, again, Shelly styled. Uh, and this was our uh, corned beef and cabbage. And um, somebody asked in one of the rooms, where do you get all your props? Uh, I get props at thrift stores and antique stores. And I can't, you know, there's no way to say, well, there's a national chain. Uh, there's nothing. I just go to thrift stores and I go to antique stores. And um, I can tell you, for example, the antique stores are always more expensive. Uh, but the and the thrift stores are less expensive, but there's a lot of things that you just don't find in thrift stores. You have to find in antique stores. And that's the same lighting. You can see it's exactly the same lighting. The only thing that has changed this shot is I moved my bike from one side of the room to the other. So <laughs> it has nothing to do with lighting. <clears throat> but the other idea, oh, we're going to talk about this in just a minute. The other idea that Shelly had was she said, this is another setup that we did. This was after March 17th. And, and I'm sorry that I didn't plan to talk about this. This is a shot that Shelly styled that I shot pretty much the same lighting. And then Shelly got this really cool idea and she said, shoot it with your iPhone so you can show the difference. So I did. I took out my iPhone and I, I took the shot. The first thing that happened is iPhone wanted to put me into portrait mode. And I don't know how much you know about your, your smartphones, but when they put you into portrait mode, they want to put everything in the background out of right the front uh, because it's for portrait. Um, they want to put that into, um, they want to make everything behind the subject uh, soft. So we lose all the texture that comes with making the subject um uh, increasing your f-stop so you can make all the subject in focus. The other thing you'll notice is that when you're using um, the setup that I showed you before, you can actually control the color of the lighting. So this was a warmer, Shelly said, this is afternoon tea. I want a warmer look. And so we gave it a warmer look. With the iPhone, it basically does, um, although you can change it, it basically does auto uh, white balance. And so it tries to neutralize to uh, 5,600 Kelvin, which is uh, daylight. Well, I wanted something in focus, so I reshot it. I tried a second time, and when I did, it started cutting things off. You can see over here it cuts off the teapot, and the teapot is one of the main characters in this, uh, in this little epic. And so I pulled back on it, and what happens with that is uh, I started seeing the corners of the two-by-two-foot replica studio. Uh, and that's because if you're going to go, if you're going to shoot telephoto, which is effectively the lens that I'm using, it's an 80 millimeter lens, which is a modern telephoto. It's kind of a portrait uh, lens. Uh, it shoots a very narrow angle and you can move further and further back. When you try to do that with an iPhone, it doesn't shoot at that angle. It doesn't give you an 80 millimeter lens or the equivalent of an 80 millimeter lens. It gives you the equivalent of about a 50 millimeter lens. So not only does the lighting, uh, not only is the lighting impacted, but now you can see the edges of the shot because of the lens. And in addition to that, uh, you get that you know, try to reduce it to daylight. Everything is reduced to daylight and you have to physically lie to it effectively uh, to change it. So uh, the Let other- Let me just add that, for instance, the camera was a good two feet back uh, from where this was taken, uh, at least two feet back. So you could get the whole shot, but you could narrow in on just what you wanted rather than having those edges. And you didn't have that kind of control with the iPhone. Yeah. Toby was right right there at the edge of that uh, studio table, and he still couldn't get the shot without right getting the edges in there. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing that you may not be able to notice on the screen, but I can see by looking at this image on my screen, it's not as sharp, right? It's just not, there's not as much resolution with it as you get with this shot. And that's not gonna do when I pull it up. It's funny because when I pull it up in Google Photos, it always wants to, so that's sharp, excuse me. 
that sharp from back to front. And uh, and it's sharp. The photo itself is a sharp photo. I don't have to do anything to get sharpness out of that photo. This is just not as sharp a photo. And I can see it uh, in the image in front of me. You'd have to, of course, download it and compare it yourself. It doesn't have the resolution of the image that came out of my camera. Now, don't get me wrong. I used to carry a small camera with me everywhere I went. I don't do that anymore because I, I expect that I can get the shot, whatever I'm shooting, with my iPhone. There are times when I have my iPhone, I take the shot, and I say to myself, dang, nabbit, I wish I had my camera with me so I had a little bit more control. But the iPhone is perfectly acceptable for what I would call candid shots. What we're doing in the studio is not candid. There are studio shots, and especially there are studio still lifes. And so you need a lot more control um, to get that. And it's not candid. It also implies that it is the equivalent of serendipitous or spur of the moment or a quick reaction. Uh, Shelly and I work for hours on these shots to get them the way that we want them uh, because we have the ability to control everything. I use my iPad as a... Um, to connect to uh, to tether my camera to, and I save all those shots. And there are literally, you know, uh, of the say uh, past five shots I've taken in the studio, there are hundreds of tries at getting at that shot until it's refined perfectly. And that's another thing that you don't get that you do get when using a camera and a setup like this rather than an iPhone is that you can make the kinds of changes that would require 100 different shots to get it right. An iPhone, you can make some changes, but you're not going to get 100 shots worth of changes to get it precisely right. And, and again, I'm not criticizing the iPhone. Uh, what I, I guess what I'm trying to say is if you're serious about your small set photography, at some point or the other, you should consider a camera versus using your iPhone. So... So which question are we going to address first? So uh, Shelly's posted it up there. Uh, and again, these are questions that I get, that I see. They're not necessarily in, uh, directed towards me. It's just a general question that comes uh, uh, from someone in the replica surfaces, either the VIP room or the uh, replica surfaces, um, what do you call it? Uh, studio, not studio, but uh, formula course. Uh, so the first one comes from Diego, and there was actually another one that looks very much the same. I don't know that necessarily we have to show it. And Diego asks, any versatile tripod recommendations that allow overhead shooting and vertical phone mount capabilities? And um, the reason they ask, uh, and Wilma asks, can anyone recommend a good tripod for iPhone photography? Because a lot of the users in that surfaces, replica surfaces studio uh, uh, Facebook page, you do use their iPhone. Now, I do want to do, just give me one second here because I want to go back because I'm going to address this as well. Let's go back just a little bit here. Hang on. You're having to follow me here and I'm... Oops. Sally was on my computer. So I do want to address one more thing, and I don't know if I have a photo that represents it here. Let's see. There's one. Okay. So one of the other things that becomes important, and you can see it uh, when they ask about versatility. So basically, when you're shooting a small set, you can do it at a number of angles, but one is what is called the eye level angle. Right, so you're you're in front of the set, and you're adjusting your camera so that, that everything uh, in uh, the set is viewable, visible, or in focus or out of focus, right? And that's called an eye level shot. And, and now you can adjust that so you're literally eye level, exactly parallel with the shot, or you can raise it at different angles. But there's another form of shot that's taken a lot, especially in food photography, and that's the flat lay. So when people in the surfaces group are asking for a tripod with versatility or for their iPhone, one of the things that they want you to consider is that they're going to be shooting flat, way, flat lays as well as the eye level shots. Okay. So that's why these are our recommendations. Shelly, could we switch over to, uh, oh, I've got to do that, don't I? Okay. 
So let's go to Diego's questions and Wilma's questions. What about a tripod? So this is the one we're recommending now. Now, in the past, you've heard me talk and about the Manfrotto make tripod. Make sure you touch that picture on your um, Amazon okay, Live. It's highlighted. There you it's go. highlighted, right? That's what it does. Got it. Mm -hmm. Remind me to do that. I'll, I'll get it here every minute to do all of these scenes at once. It's because you didn't let me. I know. I'm sorry. I was. <laughs> I should have closed this app so that you could do it. Um, so you've heard me in the past recommend the Manfrotto. The problem with the Manfrotto at the moment is that it's nearly 400 bucks. So I know the folks in the Replica Surfaces Facebook groups tend to be more frugal. They don't have a big uh, photography budget. They do it sometimes for their businesses, uh, sometimes to share their recipes, things like that. So uh, I found this for them and I've ordered one. I haven't received it yet, so I can't show it to you in live, live stream. But you can see all the features kind of in this first picture and that I would recommend to anyone. First of all, it's height. So it can go up pretty high, up to uh, 72 inches, which is six feet. But one of the features like the Manfrotto that I like very much is it has this feature that enables you to flip the uh, center column of the tripod, not only up so you get more altitude, but you it, it enables you to flip it over at various degrees because it locks in various positions. So if you want 45 or 30, or 40, 30, 45, or 90 degrees for your flat lays, it enables you to do that, right? Which is a very cool thing to do. And this in comparison, so it's one third kind of the price of the Manfrotto, but it does all those features. In addition to that, and I do have uh, the newer model, the Niewer, the company model, that is, is all of this, but doesn't include the flip over for the flat lay. That's why I had to uh, order this one. <clears throat> but it also has the feature um, where you can convert it into a monopod. And what's cool about you literally take off one of the legs and screw it into the tripod head. And, um, and what's cool about that is if you're in a fast moving situation or you're in a location where they don't allow tripods, um, you can literally remove one of the legs, attach it to the tripod head and get all the same features. So it's convenient, especially if you're doing the kind of uh, setup that requires you to move from one side to the other, or get different shots. That's what helps with the monopod. In addition to that is a carbon fiber legs. And so it's very lightweight and it folds to a very compact size. You can see it right here. Um, so it's very convenient, very lightweight, very versatile and uh, provides, and, and it's done at a reasonable price. I mean, it wasn't, so at this point I own three tripods. I made this my fourth. And the reason I could say, make it my fourth, I could, I could do it because um, of the price. You, you can't argue with the price and flexibility. So I'll probably put the other ones on Amazon. I mean, on uh, eBay. So that's what I recommended. You can see here again, they're using it in a completely different way. Uh, and with this particular photo, um, it almost doesn't need to use that feature in order to get this photo, uh, but they have. Uh, I, would, I would recommend that uh, the, the reason it's so versatile when it comes to small set photography is that it enables you to flip that camera over to the side and, um, and uh, shoot your flat lace so that you're looking down on the shot and uh, still s stable and sturdy. So what do you do with that bar? I don't imagine that you're using, he's using it as a slider there. Uh, no, I mean, he's basically, so that bar is, is not a bar. It's actually the center column. They don't show it in any of these oh, shots I see. because it's hidden in the, I guess the last one is going to show it. Let's see. Or that. Right. So that's not actually like a, um, uh, a crossbar uh, crossbar or a, um, what's the other thing that we call it? A, a boom, a, a boom, a boom. Right. It, it's not an addition to uh, the tripod. It is the center column of the tripod that you pull all the way up, press a button and flip it over. And then you can adjust the length. That's what I'm I saying. See. 
he really didn't need to do that on that shot. He would have gotten the same altitude, and uh, and if he had just left it inside, but they had. I just shot. wondered if he was using it as a slider, moving it uh, during a video shot or something. That would be very hard because uh, <laughs> you adjust it using. I can't do this at once. So there's a knob right on the top that locks it, and and if you were to use it in that way, that locking position not only locks along the um, horizontal axis it locks it in roll. So if you were to loosen that knob, the first thing that's going to happen is your yeah. camera and tripod. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, and the other thing too, is it doesn't have uh, ball bearings, anything like that. So it would be, it wouldn't be very smooth to use it as a slider. You know? Okay. You might as well just take it off the camera and, you know, hold it in your hand mm -hmm. uh, uh, one way or the other. Uh, but the other one, uh, the other option, which I do have, that I would recommend is uh, this one, and I'm gonna jump over. Okay. And this is uh, the uh, Slick Creator Studio Kit. And Slick, as you know, Oops. is, uh, <laughs> do I have to do it? <laughs> I made you small. Okay. It's because uh, you're the- Because I was in first, sorry. Yeah. That's okay. Let me see if I can do it. How can I do this? Let me say. There you go. There you go. Got it. So this is the slick uh, table mount. I don't know. They call it the Creator Studio Kit. And it's designed for people like us who are shooting um, live streams. And we want the camera right on the other end of this. And then we want to be able to mount this on the back of the desk right here. Now, we don't use it that way. We actually have our camera mounted on a light stand uh, because it's a webcam. But it's got some real nice features that would enable you to open this up and then slide it out for flat lays. Uh, so that's the good news. It's very convenient, but it is more than that tripod that I just showed you, right? So it can get pretty expensive, but it's very convenient. It would make a great uh, tool if you were going to a location and shooting uh, flat lays, so you don't have to take a bunch of equipment with you. It's it's very well constructed. It has some very cool features, like uh, it does have the uh, Swiss Arca mount. And normally, when you have a Swiss Arca mount, it has a, a thumb screw kind of knob here. This one is more like the uh, Manfrotto. It has a flip switch, so when you put the mount in there, it sets off the flip switch. I can't reach it in there. It's inside the so it's our come out. So it makes changing cameras very easy or changing whatever you're using. And of course, it does have a ball mount on it, which gives you additional flexibility. So this would be great for flat lays. And I tried it out. And it's good if you're using your iPhone to shoot on the replica surfaces, because this will go all the way up into the vertical. And everything is very well designed. You, you probably can't see these. Maybe you can, but right here, it has the teeth to make sure that it, the grip is firm and it doesn't come out of place while you're using it. You can adjust, it has one adjustment here and it has the other adjustment for altitude here. And then it has this very usable uh, desk clamp and it gives you a lot of space in here uh, to mount onto a desk. Uh, it also comes with uh, a pair of rubber pads. So you can put one rubber pad here on top of the surface and one on the bottom uh, on the other surface. Here's the other cool thing. It has a tripod mount, a quarter by 20 inch tripod, and it actually it's unscrewable. So it also has a three eighth inch. So you could add this to your tripod and get even more flexibility. Okay. So very cool, uh, pretty nice features, very usable. And um, I, I actually have a picture of it. Let me go back to pictures for just a sec. Because I did mount it on my, oh, I don't know why we end up at, uh, close that. Those are my uh, pictures. Yeah, they are. You must have signed on uh, to your account uh, from this computer. So let me go back here. And there it is. So that's what it looks like mounted. And that's on, so that's a replica surfaces. That's a two by two replica surface on the replica surfaces studio. Uh, and that's what it looks like. So <clears throat> it, not that, not that you need it, but if you're all you're shooting is flat lays, it would be perfect for that. 
Now, when it comes to shooting flat lays, you're stuck with a, a lens problem. And we're not going to talk about that today. We may do it in another uh, episode. And the normal ca the camera lens that comes, the, the lens that comes through the camera is probably around 50 millimeters. What you're going to find is that when you're shooting flat lays, if you use even a 50 millimeter lens on your camera, you're going to have to get a lot of altitude between you and the surface, between you and the subject. Um, so I'm going to strongly recommend that if you start doing uh, progressively more flat lays, that you can uh, consider a moderate wide angle. Um, something in the 24 to 35 millimeter range so that you don't have to go, you know, one woman said she ends up standing up on her tippy toes on a chair to get the shot. Like, no, you don't want to be doing that. You know, you could end up hurting yourself. Okay, let's go to the next one. So I promised you today, and I promised Shelly we wouldn't have such a long show, um, that we we're going to talk about lighting. So I'm going to show you basic lighting setups, and it starts with uh, this. Now, you've heard in the past uh, from me that I'm a big fan of using flash even for this kind of work rather than what is referred to as continuous lighting or natural light. The reason I don't use natural light is because it's unpredictable. You can't, you can't predict natural light. The reason I don't use um, continuous lighting is because it A, heats up the room, B, there's usually a fan associated with it, not that you have to worry when you're in still photography, but flash for me is the most flexible. I can control it more than I, I uh, can any other lighting. And that's not only the flash itself, but in, in the light modifiers that I add to it. This is the flash that I use, and this is my favorite, I guess, the way to describe it. It's um, it's the Godox MS300 flash. It's a 300 watt second flash. And for this kind of uh, lighting, when you're, you're shooting small sets, 300 watt seconds is more than enough. As a matter of fact, I'll explain what you have to do uh, later on in the show. A uh, couple of things about this flash. It does come with a modeling light. It doesn't come with any light modifiers, uh, including a reflector. So most of these lights come with a reflector, at least seven inch reflector, but it doesn't come with anything. So be aware of that. So when you get the light, uh, you're not surprised that it doesn't have any light modifiers. And that's okay with me. I'd actually prefer per that way because I don't have to worry about the light modifier and I know it's gonna go into my soft boxes and I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, if you look at the price on this flash, you'll see that it is a lot less expensive than a lot of other flashes that are out there. And I think the primary reason for that is that it doesn't have TTL capabilities. It doesn't have through the lens capabilities. It does not communicate with your camera to the extent that it uh, can provide TTL through the lens. And I think that's why the price is so good. Well, I'm not a big fan of TTL anyway. That's my personal opinion. I like being able to control the light and the light that's coming into the camera as opposed to hoping for the best. Nothing wrong with it. A lot of times, I'm, I'm going to say 90% of the time, TTL is correct, right? It knows what it's doing. Uh, but for this price, considering it has 300 watt seconds and that big tube, the round tube that you see there is the flash unit. And you can buy if you if you you shouldn't run out in your lifetime, but if you somehow drop it or break the flash unit, uh, they cost thirty six dollars to replace. The second light that you see sticking out there is the uh, modeling light, and the modeling light is so that you can see the effects of the flash. And what happens is the modeling light is on when you're not using the flash a second before. The flash fires, the modeling light turns off, the flash fires, and then it goes back on. So it's very convenient to give you a sense of what your shot's going to look like uh, beforehand. And you can't go wrong with it. Uh, you know, it's just the price is so good that uh, uh, suffering because you don't have a TTL feature. <laughs> My Amazon arrival just came. I just got the uh -huh. I should Did you go. just get your tripod? Uh, no, this was the uh, pop-up <laughs> background. Oh, I was going to say, we could do an unboxing of the yeah, tripod. Yeah, we could do an unboxing of the tripod. No, that's not due until Saturday. So um, so this is my favorite light. So that's the kind of started everything that we do. I do not use multiple lights for small set photography. I use one, and then I change the light modifier. And we're going to take a look at that in just a sec. So that's the Godox MS300. Now, how you do you didn't get... show the uh, phone holder, by the way. Oh, oh I didn't? I'm sorry, let's go back. Let's talk about that for just a second before we go on. All right. So one of the questions that came from 
uh, Wilma. She said, can anyone recommend a good tripod for iPhone photography? Right? So uh, most tripods are good for iPhone photography. They don't make a distinction between, you know, uh, uh, iPhones and any other device. You just have to have the right mount. So one of the things that uh, I went looking for was a mount, a mount that, again, gives Did me a lot of... you highlight that on Amazon, by the way? Oh, good point. <laughs> Thanks you're for talking about it. There we go. All right. So uh, one of the things that I went looking for was something that was versatile, flexible, adaptable as the other equipment that I use. And I found this, and I own two of these. Um, and it's for specifically for iPhones. It's made by a company called Ulanzi. Uh, they're an Italian company, and they sell this kind of equipment, mostly iPhone uh, kinds of equipment. It's made of metal. It's very sturdy. It has a very big spring. Spring. So I have. Do I have my iPhone with me? So I have a an iPhone 13. Let me just put that away. So I have an iPhone 13, and it has a, a box on it, right? So it's pretty good size, and, and it's thick as well because of the protective box that goes around that, all right? And it fits in this mount, and it fits comfortably in this mount, and this mount holds it securely. This is, this is a heavy phone. I mean, it's heavy not only because of the phone itself is heavy, but this box add weight, adds weight to it. I guess I should talk about these one of these days, maybe when we do an iPhone only thing. Uh, the reason I like it is it has this lens cover on it and it has the kind of safety ring. I don't know what else to call this thing. It's a safety ring so you don't drop your phone when you're taking your daily selfie. Not that I take a daily selfie, but. Okay, so if you want to turn your tripod into an iPhone tripod, you don't change the tripod, you change the mount. And that mount, as you can see down at the bottom here, conveniently comes with a Swiss Arca mount. So it fits into any Swiss Arca uh, tripod mount, camera mount for, for your tripod. So it's very convenient in that way. You don't have to get any features, any additional features. Now I know, I don't know if it shows it, but it also has a several quarter inch by 20 mounts. There's two on the back. Uh, there's a cold shoe mount so that if you want, you can just literally mount it onto a cold shoe on top of your camera. Uh, so it has a lot of features. Uh, when you flip it from uh, vertical to horizontal or vice versa, that red knob on the back locks it in place so it doesn't uh, scroll around. Let me see if it shows that other quarter inch by 20. That shows how much it opens up to 89 millimeters. Let's see. Oh, I guess it doesn't show it, but you can see using it, uh, uh, the number of ways you can use it. And that's because it has those additional quarter inch by 20 um, uh, mount, mounting holes on it. Uh, so it makes it very easy to use. So it, it is a little bit more expensive than some of the plastic ones, but this is not going to break on you. It's not going to pop apart on you on a bad day out in the uh, field. Okay, now let's go over to lights. Okay, so we did talk about the Godox 300 and I didn't put it up. Now, one of the things that you're going to want, and I did touch it, so we're okay there. Uh, one of the things that you're going to want is a way for your high to camera. And again, we're out of the, we're not talking about iPhones anymore. This is if you own a camera with a hot shoe. Um, this is the Godox X Pro. Now the O at the end of it, uh, indicates that it's designed for the Olympus slash Panasonic Lumix hot shoe. They make them for other cameras as well, including Canon, Nikon, Sony, and Fuji, and they're followed by the various letters, C, N, um, S, and F, right? So they make them for all the major brands. Um, thankfully, uh, um, Olympus and Panasonic, Panasonic is the ones they, one of the ones that they considered. So this is what enables me to control the MS300 from my camera. This is how my camera talks to the MS300. Now this is a Godox standard. It has a 2.4 megahertz wireless system built into it. This is the transmitter. There's a receiver built into the flash. I also own several Godox uh, 860V speed lights, and it also communicates with the speed lights. Now this will not only control one flash, 
it will, using uh, the features on the X Pro, it will control up to uh, 64, eight times eight, uh, eight times eight, 64 flashes, uh, all if they're within 110 feet. So uh, if you need that kind of flash power, you can do it with a Godox X Pro. It's very inexpensive for what it does. And the cool thing about it is that between tethering your camera to your I, I, your smart device and tethering the flash to your camera using the X-Pro, you never have to leave your camera. All the controls that you need can be done from behind the camera. You can control your camera by tethering it and you can control your flash by including an X-Pro, um, the X-Pro flash uh, transmitter on it. Very convenient. So between the flash transmitter and that flash that I was talking about earlier, you, oh, you know what? I have it. I actually have one here on my desk. So let me move this out of the way. And you can get a sense of its size. It's not very big. It has a very, let me see if I can turn it on. I don't know if it'll go on for me. Yeah. So that's the screen. Uh, it's a very informative screen. You control it using uh, this uh, control wheel right here. Um, and it's very, very useful. Uh, and it's helpful in the sense that uh, you never have to leave the back of your camera to control your flashes. So the Godox X Pro dash whatever your camera model is. All right. Highly recommended. Okay. So let's go to light modifiers. And the light modifier that I use most often is this one right here. And this is the Godox 24 by 36. Now they don't, it's not actually 24 by 36. It's 60, 60 millimeters by 90 millimeters. And it comes the way that you see it. Now I, I did bring the case. <laughs> you, uh, gotta touch the button. I did. Oh, oh, I gotta touch it. All right, there we go. So I should know that when you're laughing, you're-, you're When I do this, yeah, <laughs> I touch yeah. the button. <laughs> So not to scare you any, but this is the case that it comes in, all right? So it's very, it folds down very in a very compact way. This, and I'm, I may have to stand up and walk back. This is what it looks like, full size, okay? So it comes out of the package. It's got some uh, wires that, they're spring, spring wires that uh, fill in, you can see them, they're right in here on the, uh, on the uh, softbox itself. And then here is my Godox 300 and that fits in, it uses what is referred to as a Bowens mount and it's an industry standard mount. And so anything that has a Bowens mount on it, you can mount any of the Godox flashes on it, including their speed flashes. So it's, uh, it's pretty good size. It does include the grid that you see in the image there uh, that's a, it's a grid that you can put in front of the two. It has two softeners, one uh, internal baffle and one external, and then it has the grid to be more directional. Now to me, I'm not sure why they include it. I'm sure there's a reason. I think studio portrait photography is used a lot. It makes for a little bit harder light because it makes it more directional. And when you compress light, like anything else, it makes it just a little bit harder. So I don't use the grid. It's actually, I think I have it in here. So, so I don't lose it. Yeah. So there's the grid that I, I don't uh, necessarily use. Okay. So the reason I choose this particular light modifier is it produces a very soft and even light with some shadow, but not enough to be distracting just enough so that you get the effect that the light, what, what I'm trying to do, of course, is make it look like it's natural light coming from a window uh, that's facing north, et cetera, et cetera. That's the effect that it does, that, that it gets. Um, and then, because you can control it with, a, with the camera, I can tell the camera I want to see daylight, which makes it natural, 5600K. Or I tell the camera I'm shooting in the shade. I, 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 I light the camera, I guess that's the best way to do it. And it warms it up. Uh, and so if I want that warm shot, you, you'll see that in the warm shot that we made right here, that one, same lighting setup, right? 
why Google Photos does that. So same lighting setup, exactly the same. And the only thing that I changed in the camera was that I told the camera we were shooting in the shade. Uh, the white balance of the camera was shooting in the shade. And it took exactly the same light and it warmed it up because the camera thought we were shooting in the shade and it, it, it made its natural correction. Now, my camera, like most of your you who have more contemporary cameras, you have the ability to control uh, a white balance for your shot from zero to 10,000K, right? And any place in between. But I have learned with my camera, if I just tell it I'm in the shade or I'm a cloudy day, it warms it up just about the right amount. So same light setup, same flash unit, same softbox. The difference is in the camera, I said, we're shooting in, in, uh, in the shade. Okay, so that's the Godox um, 60 by 90. Now, there is a style of photography called dark food photography. Uh, I'm sorry, food photography called dark food photography. There's a style of still life called uh, 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 dark and moody photography. So to accommodate that, they offer another flash, and I don't see it on here, so I'm going to have to go back. I'm sorry, they offer another flash modifier this one and touch my button. <laughs> Probably a better way to put that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, and this is the 30 by 90 Godox softbox. And it comes a lot with the same features. You can see here it comes with the grid, with or without the grid. It has an internal baffle and then the, the cover. And um, it has the uh, uh, aluminum inside. They're all this silver aluminum inside. And then it has the Bowens mount. So I can literally take my uh, my... Uh, uh, Godox GS300 flash, remove it from the 60 by 90, attach it to the uh, 30 by 90, and I have a light that's going to be more helpful when it comes to that soft and moody or that dark and moody photography, because it has a narrow narrower focus. If you put the grid on it, it has a very narrow focus, and you don't end up having to use a lot of flags uh, in between your shot and the light. So I do have one of those, and I do have that in its package. So you can see that's <laughs> sorry. You have to, no, that's okay. Uh, it's because we did what we did. So this is the Godox 30 by 90 package. And you know, I talk about those rods, the uh, spring rods that they come with. Let me see if I can reach in here and get one. Here we go. So these are the spring rods, and they're very bendable and they have to bend because on one side you have the the combination of your Bowens mount which is this little thing with the Frankenstein corners on it and then this is how you mount your softbox and the way you do it is you put there's holes in here and there's holes at the end of the softbox that it and enables these to bend and it puts tension on the softbox so it keeps it straight. Now, when you pick them up, they're not very heavy. I mean, they don't weigh much. They do take up a lot of room. And if I was going to a field shoot, um, and I've done this uh, back in the olden days, uh, and you took this type of softbox, it can be a pain in the butt to set up, especially if you're doing a four-point portrait shoot where you have to set up at least three of them and maybe even uh, a fourth. So, uh, but I love my Godox softboxes. Now, you can find this style of softbox with other brands, and that's because the softboxes are manufactured by one company in China, and then other companies in China, like Godox or like Newer, take them, rebrand them with their names, and they're basically the same softbox. There are some American-made brands, and they are more expensive, and, and from what I've heard, I don't have any evidence myself of this, is that they tend to be more durable, but I use these three or four days every week and I've never had any problems with them. Now, older stuff, stuff that I was using back in 2017 wasn't quite as durable, but these seem to be, they, they seem to work out uh, all the bugs uh, associated with durability and they're very durable right now, okay? So next question is, what do I use when I'm not in the studio? I am out in the field. This is, uh, there is a Godox version of this, but when I bought it, I don't know why I picked up the newer band. This is the newer, newer 24 by 24 pop-up. And it comes in this bag right here. 
like that. It's not very big as you can see. And it comes with this uh, mount. And this mount that you see here is what is referred to as a speed light mount. And that's why I feel like it's used uh, more often in the field. Let me open it up and show you the mount first. So this is the mount. Okay. And as you can see, it's designed so that you insert your speed light here and you can use this soft box with your speed light. But as you can also see, it has those little grooves right there, right here and right, I can't see the one on the other side, right there. Those are the Bowens mounts, okay? And that means that I could take my MS300 and mount it into this if all I wanted to use was the 24 by 24 softbox. Now I have used it in the studio. It creates uh, a light that is not quite as soft as the 60 by 90, but it's very convenient for a quick setup. Uh, so, you know, if you're doing a uh, Marine Corps annual birthday ball and you have to take pictures of all the people that are coming into the ball, you know, kind of, they do the equivalent of a red carpet. Two of these with these mounts and speed lights will work for you. Let me show you the, the <laughs> one she's laughing and she's going to laugh because she knows what happens here. Okay. okay. I think you oh. got it. Never mind. Do I have yeah, I have it. You're good. I can You're see. You're good. Okay. So this is the soft box, right? And the reason it's uh, in this compact form is it does the taco fold, right? But when you open it, it's always an experience. Like, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna come back here a little bit just so I can open it. Let me make sure I grab it from the right place. Okay, here it goes. Okay, that's how it opens up, and then you pop it open this way, and you pop it open this way, and then you add your baffles. So this one doesn't have you don't have to spend time putting the um, spring rods in it. It just folds up like that, and literally it takes. You do the taco fold, and I'm not going to embarrass myself because it requires effort to do it. I'll do it after the after the program today. Uh, so it's a convenient way to get started. You get one of them for $42. It's a convenient package, and it comes with everything you need to make a soft box, whether you have a speed light or not. And here's some ways that it looks when you do the speed light, right? And I have, uh, as I said, the Godox speed lights, and it enables me to use them. And, and actually, you can use any light modifier that uses the Bowens mount. So as you can see there, they show one with the seven inch reflector Bowens mount, but this fits right into the back. Let me, I'm gonna open this up again so you can see it. You don't even have to screw it in when you're using their mount. It actually, on the back here, these are springs already. So all you have to do is, where'd that mount? All you have to do to use this is this rim right here actually fits in those, let me see, can I do that? Those spring mounts. Can't see it with my hand. Right. And so it's very convenient. Uh, it probably takes on a bad day, um, three minutes to set up, right? And I have two of them. So when I'm doing field photography, uh, I can take two of these with me and control them because I have the Godox flashes. Each of those flashes has a receiver in, built into it. And I can use the Godox X-Pro to control the flashes from my location behind the camera. All right. So where are we going next? All right. Well, we should bring this up because I'm going to go back here so you can see the setup again. All right. And you'll see uh, basically two kinds of light stands. One light stand is over here. It's the uh, C stand that comes to us from the film industry along with a boom arm that comes with the C stand. And it comes with these two C stand style clamps. Now, the re I, I, I don't often use C stands. Uh, because they are they don't make good, you know, unless you have a, a truckload of them and you have people that can, you know, production assistants that are going to help you, they're, they're a pain. They, they really are. But if you have a studio that requires the flexibility, not only of putting it on wheels, for example, but uh, carrying this kind of weight, then you probably want a C-stand. And, and I made a mistake here. I should have uh, 
shot it with the sandbags on. I put sandbags on all three legs so it doesn't flip over on you. And that's just kind of film industry standard, as Shelley will tell you. But the combination of this light and this uh, softbox well, puts a lot of weight. It's not 50 pounds. It's not even 25 pounds. It's, it's probably 15 pounds total. But you want that something. You want that on something sturdier than your your average light stand, because you would have to put it to get the right angle. You're going to have to put it on a boom arm anyway, right? So we have that. We have a light stand over here that I'm going to show you in just a minute for the reflector, and then we have a light stand with this Linko uh, boom arm. Because uh, as you can see right here, when you see the photo, you'll see that little shamrock that, uh, what do they call them, Shelley? There's a name for them. Sun catcher. Sun catcher shamrock. And we just hung that from a piece of monofilament light. Um, uh, I'm sorry, monofilament line. And we lined up the monofilament line with the background, that white crossbar in the background. So you can't see the monofilament unless you look really, really close. And that's the effect that we got so that it was uh, catching light. Now, one of the things that you learn about the replica surfaces lush view is you can see that when they took this shot, you can see it right back here and right back here. The light that I don't know whether they actually took this shot or they designed it in Photoshop, but the light is coming from this angle right here. You can see where the shadow is. So whenever you're shooting something that uses the lush view, it almost dictates that your light is coming from your uh, from set left, but from the camera's right. And you've got to put it a little bit behind you in order to get the effect of it coming through the window. So keep that in mind if you are using lush view for any of your shots. It's always a little bit behind. You can see that's what we've done. Let's see if I, it's in the next view. Yeah. So you can see the light is actually set a little bit behind the set and at an angle. So it's shooting in this way to match. This is, you can see up here in the lush view, that's where the light is coming from in lush view. And you can see it just a little bit more here, right? So it's creating that shadow and the impression is the, the light. And, and the reason I found that out is because I took a picture. I, for whatever reason, I shoot a lot of still life photos. Just, I, set up the light on the left. That's what it did. And then make whatever adjustments it was. And I did that normally. And then I looked at the shot and I realized that doesn't match. It doesn't look right. It's coming from the opposite side. So I've learned to kind of shoot from my right, uh, uh, set right versus camera right. And um, it works out much better when you're using. Now, this is not true of all replica surfaces. Surfaces, this is just very specific to uh, the uh, lush view. All right. Now, um, so that C stand, uh, I didn't, I didn't go back to that C stand. So that C stand is made by eMart, and the reason I picked it is because it came with the crossbar and two clamps. And most C stands that you see out there will be the C stand by themselves. And then you have to buy the crossbar separately, and then you have to buy any additional clamps. And you want one clamp for this mount right here in the middle, and then you want another clamp for the light. And the reason you want those clamps is one you once you've tightened them and you've done it correctly, they're not going to fail you unless you do something really dumb with the weight on the end of that. But the other reason I liked them was they came, well, they didn't come, but they you could buy... Uh, a set of wheels that by made by Emart specifically for this C stand, and uh, don't be surprised that that sixty dollars uh, it comes as a result of they are very well made and they have several ball bearings in them to make sure you can move that around very smoothly. If you're working in a studio, um, I strongly recommend going with the wheels because uh, you, you sooner or later you're going to need to move that light and it's a bigger pain in the butt to move that light if you're lifting it up and trying to move it around because eventually one day, and it has happened to me more than once, it's going gonna, it's gonna to lean over too far to one side and it's going to come over on you and hopefully you don't do any, any serious damage. Okay? And those wheels have brakes and they're real easy to flip on and off with your foot or use your hand like this person did. Yeah, you can, because you do it all the time. You just put on your foot, right? I've seen you mm -hmm. do it. Yeah, yeah. So very easy to use. Makes gives you some mobility. Raises the stand a couple of inches. Uh, but this stand was designed to go up to uh, 10 or 12 feet, I think. Uh, and it's very sturdy. And it's very heavy. But uh, it's very good for what it does. Okay, let's move over to 
we're talking about how to create light. Again, you can see in this photo here that I don't have a second light. So let me look at the, let's look at the photo, right? So there is one light coming from this back, this direction into this. So this is, this is uh, Google Photos. For some reason, when you pull it up the first time, it's, uh, it's uh, squirrely. So the light is coming from over on this side. So that's my right-hand side. And then I wanted something to fill in these shadows. But you can see there is a shadow being created, so you do have some depth. These small shadows right here. Now, sometimes if you're using one light, those shadows will have a tendency to come completely dark, and there's no texture in it. You don't see anything. What I liked about Shelly choosing these particular sets of dishes, which actually belong to her, is that in some cases, the light went through and created some uh, uh, green uh, texture along with the shadow. But you want to fill that in. So what you don't want, for example, if these cookies right here with these edges, you don't want them to be completely dark. So in order to avoid that, what you're going to do is you're going to put a reflector opposite the light in order to fill in those shadows on the far side. Um, and again, you can set up a second light if you want, but it's it, it doesn't need that much light. As a matter of fact, you'll spend more time, if you put up a second light, you will spend more time trying to configure the two lights so that they work with each other because you still want shadows on that far side. Uh, but if you use a second light, you'll spend more time configuring the two lights so they work with each other than using a light and a reflector. And that reflector is the Selens reflector. It's 24 by 24. Um, and if you see them available, buy them because I don't know what happens, but like the whole world buys them all on uh, one day and then they're out of stock. I like them because they're square and they fit very nicely with the studio. They have handles, so if you don't have a light stand and you have somebody helping you, you can get uh, use the handles to adjust. And the reason they call it five in one is because the uh, main part, the foldable part, uh, is a translucent white. So you can actually use it as a light modifier. You can shoot your flash. You can put it in front of the flash on a light stand or have somebody hold it, and it will act as a softener, light softener. That's the main part. And that's the part that's sprung and that you fold into the, does it show it there? Yeah. So, it, oh, that's not the taco fold. Where are the taco fold? They didn't show it. Anyway, so it folds, it does the taco fold and it's a bag about that big that it comes into and then pops out again. Uh, but the other four surfaces are gold, silver, black, and white. And they're zippered onto the frame. And each of the zippered packets has well, has the other four. So one of the sides, if you zipper it on one side, you get the gold and the white, or yeah, the gold and the white. If you zipper it the other side, you get the black and the silver. So that's why they call it a five and one, the translucent plus gold, silver, black, and white. Very convenient and only $19. You can't go wrong with it. I would I would have one of these. I have one of these before I had the replica surfaces studio uh, because I use them a lot in portrait photography. I use them as the, uh, I'll use the softbox as a key light. Uh, and I may use the uh, speed lights as background and hair light, but I use the reflector as the fill light. I don't use a second a second light for fill light, even when I'm doing portraiture, okay? Now, if you do get that, you're gonna wanna get these as well, a set of these, they come in packages of two. And those are, they, they don't call them reflector clips, they call them reflector disc holder clips, right? That's so you can get uh, all the keywords in. Uh, but these have springs on them. You pull them back. You put them on a light stand. They fit on uh, light stands, most light stands. You pull the spring back, slip your reflector up into that, and then you, it'll hold it for you while you're doing other things. And you can see it right there. There's a reflector clip holding the reflector. Now, the thing about this is it doesn't hold it at angles, but when you're doing this kind of photography where the light doesn't move a lot, you just pull it, put it opposite. And you can actually see it, especially when you're using, I use the gold one, the gold reflector on this side. And all you have to do is kind of move it and you can see exactly where to place it to get the effect uh, that you want uh, out of it. 
And then, of course, there is a different set of light stands that go for that. You don't have to get the big C stands for that. Now, there are a lot of light stands that you'll find if you just do light stands on Amazon. Uh, I've learned that if you're not getting a C stand and you want a very durable, very heavyweight, carry a lot of weight, uh, move you move. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> like a little worm, um, light stand. Uh, this is the best choice you could make, and that is the newer two-piece. It comes in a package of two for $114. It, it scales up to 102 inches. Uh, it's stainless steel. It has uh, good locks on it. They're very durable uh, and heavy-duty locks. And the other feature that I like about it, let me see if I can find a picture of it right here, right there. So that light mount, the individual mount, uh, will mount either horizontal, horizontally <clears throat> or vertically. Or vertically. Uh, so that you can mount your light one of two ways. And it's very convenient when you're using a light like the uh, with a with the um, softbox modifier on it. If you mount it mounted horizontally, you can spin it uh, a couple, you know around 180 degrees if you need to, but it's a lot easier to use if you mount it with the vertical mount. And that's, to the best of my knowledge, this is the only model of light stand, the newer stainless steel, and you'll see them with other manufacturers, this stainless steel that has that feature on it. And I think part of it is the fact that their, um, their accessories, the things that they use are very sturdy. They're very heavyweight and very sturdy, okay? So I think that it is, that it, it's all about lighting today. That's Am I right. missing anything, Shelly? Anything that you see me use that I don't have in here? That was all the things that uh, you have in the carousel. Yeah. 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 So uh, those are the kinds of shots that we're getting. So let's see if we can do that. We can show you some of the shots. So there's a, this is again, all the same lighting equipment, right? High key, that's the setup. Low key. Same, same setup. You can actually see the highlight that's coming from behind. Shelly did the pour, and I wanted this rim of the uh, beer container uh, carafe or whatever you call it uh, to come through. We talked about this shot a little bit last week. Same lighting setup, right? Um, and then this was, did I do the lighting setup for this? This was the same lighting setup as well. The only thing I changed was aside from the scene. Shelly changed the scene for us. Uh, but aside from that, I told my camera we were shooting in a, on a cloudy day. And that's where you get the, the warmer look to it. Right? So that's the advantage of having a camera over an iPhone. An iPhone does take a wonderful shot. No doubt about that. It takes a, you know, a shot that would have been a lot better than a camera that you had bought in the 2000s. That's how good they are. But they're not as flexible. And you have to ask yourself whether or not you want the flexibility that you get with a DSLR mirrorless camera that you don't uh, with an iPhone. You didn't talk about the replica surfaces or you didn't include that? I didn't include it only because it wasn't a replica surfaces day. I wanted to focus about lighting. We will talk about replica surfaces next week. I think we're going to talk camera and lenses. And the reason Shelly felt like our shows were getting too long when we tried to put all of it in at one time. So <clears throat> we're going to limit it to certain topical areas, you know, camera mounts, cameras and lenses. And again, I can only tell you what I use, but... I'm happy to answer your questions. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them because I've been doing this for 50 years. So I know, know a lot about a lot of things. So, yeah. So you okay. can send those to support at videotarot.com if you have right. any questions think, yeah. or just put them in the comments and we'll see them there. Roger. All right. Shelly, sorry you weren't here today, um, but I look forward to seeing you next week. And of course, we'll talk throughout the rest of the week, I'm sure. And don't forget to end the stream on the Amazon before you end the stream on the computer. Should I do Amazon right now? Whenever you're ready. Okay, I'm going to end Amazon right now, and then I'll uh, because it does the end the outro doesn't make any difference to Amazon, right? It's up to you. Oh, okay. I'm going to play the outro. What the heck? Okay. All right. Bye. Talk to you later. Thank you for joining Video Tarot Live, hosted by Toby Eunice and Shelley Carney. Please subscribe and leave a comment or question, and we'll consider your ideas for future shows. Share this live stream with your family and friends so they can learn about current digital photography practices.
Check the show description box for links and resources and please come back again next week.